Hello, my name is Adrian Sheck, and I'd like to speak to you about the pleiotropic effects of the therapeutic ketogenic diet, an adjuvant therapy whose time has come. Aberrant metabolism is a hallmark of cancer, so that suggests there could be a therapeutic vulnerability, but it's got to be done in a way that protects normal cells. So for this, we are studying the therapeutic ketogenic diet. This is a high-fat, low-carbohydrate, adequate protein diet. It should be done under the guidance of a trained dietitian or nutritionist. It reduces blood glucose, increases blood ketones, which includes beta-hydroxybutyrate, acetoacetate, and acetone. It's an excellent energy source for normal cells, in particular cells in the brain. It's been used as a treatment for refractory pediatric epilepsy for many years, so it's got a known safety profile in both pediatric and adult people. Uh, it's also being looked at for other neurodegenerative diseases and cancers. It has been shown to inhibit the growth of brain tumors in vivo in preclinical studies, which are mouse models. Uh, there are also case studies in small clinical trials, and there's anecdotal studies as well. So there are a number of ways you can get to metabolic ketosis. Uh, there's therapeutic ketogenic diet, exogenous ketones, which I'm sure Dr. Angela Poff is giving an excellent talk about. Uh, intermittent fasting, and caloric restriction, but we're going to focus on therapeutic ketogenic diet. The first experiment we did was actually an in vitro experiment, and we used a very aggressive cell line. This cell line had, be had been derived from the fourth tumor that a young man had. This individual had been treated with many therapies. This was uh, quite a while ago, and I believe the 1980s. Um, we grew these cells in normal cell culture media, which was high glucose. So there was no glucose reduction. We gave five millimolar each of beta-hydroxybutyrate and acetoacetate, acetoacetate. And we also used 10 microgram per mil of BCNU or carmistine. This is a therapy that this young man had been given. And the important line is this line in purple right here. If we did just BCNU, the cells lag for a while, then they start to grow. That's normal when you treat cells with uh, a chemotherapeutic agent such as BCNU. When we use the ketones, again, the cells lagged a little bit, and then they started to grow, although it was at a slower rate than cells that were just mock-treated. But when we put the two together, it wiped out the culture. And that told us that it was worth studying ketones uh, because they could be an, a good adjuvant for the standard of care. So what we've shown is that the ketogenic diet slows the growth of a murine glioma in vivo, and it enhances the activity of radiation and chemotherapy in vivo. So this is just a Kaplan-Meier plot of the ketogenic diet alone. Uh, we used a human formulation of the ketogenic diet, and you can see the faster the line drops, the faster the animals are succumbing to the tumor. So the standard diet is this black line, ketogenic diet is the red line. When we did this in the presence of temozolomide, which is the current chemotherapy used in patients. You can see that temozolomide was standard diet. You had a higher median survival than you did with diet alone. But again, the ketogenic diet potentiated the activity of temozolomide. But what was particularly exciting was that when done in the presence of radiation, not only did it potentiate the effects of radiation, but it essentially cured 9 of 11 mice of their tumors. Around 101 days, the animals were put back on standard diet from ketogenic diet, and these tumors did not come back. So what are the other effects of a ketogenic diet on cancer? Well, there's a huge number of effects. It inhibits growth factor signaling, suppresses insulin-like growth factor, uh, suppresses the PI3 kinase AKT mTOR pathways, decreases mTORC1 and mTORC2 signaling, decreases phospho ERK, AMP-activated protein kinase, pyruvate kinase, and P53. And this has been published uh, not only by our laboratory, but by a number of other laboratories. It reduces reactive oxygen species, again, our laboratory and other laboratories. And it reduces inflammation through reducing cyclooxygenase 2, but also by inhibiting the NLRP3 inflammasome. So one of our early experiments was we were looking at cyclooxygenase 2, and looking at it in vivo, this is just using um, ReadyJet COX-2 probe, which is fluorescent, so you can see the mouse is, uh, is anesthetized. Uh, given this probe, the probe centers on COX-2, and this is quantitative. So if this is the uh, level of COX-2 with animals on a standard diet, when they're on ketogenic diet, it's reduced. But what's important is after radiation, 
COX-2 is actually increased, but animals that were given radiation and the ketogenic diet, that increase in COX-2 was abrogated, and in fact, COX-2 was, was low. So this showed that not only does it <clears throat> reduce inflammation that's mediated by cyclooxygenase 2, but it even does it after radiation. So what are some of the other effects? It reduces peritumoral edema. Very important in brain tumors where patients uh, are often put on steroids because of edema. Again, our lab and other laboratories. It reduces hypoxia, and hypoxia causes the expression of HIF-1-alpha. This is a pro-tumor uh, transcriptional activator. It reduces the expression and the activation of other pro-tumor genes, such as NF-kappa-B, uh, matrix metalloproteases, and others. And again, this was not only published by ourselves, but by others. And we've shown that it enhances the anti-tumor immune response. So metabolic ketosis can really cause profound changes in the expression of a vast variety of pro-tumor genes, and it also affects cells that are in the tumor microenvironment. So these changes not only can affect the growth of the tumor itself, but they can enhance the activity of a variety of other therapeutic strategies. And uh, this shows, this is our, uh, our paper from 2015 that showed what I mentioned earlier, which was a ketogenic diet alters the hypoxic response, ex alters the ex expression of a number of proteins, including those that are associated with angiogenesis. And then in 2021, another group using the same mouse model that we had used added bevacizumab or Avastin, which is a therapy used in people with glioblastoma and show that the ketogenic diet actually enhanced the anti-tumor efficacy of Avastin in uh, this glioblastoma intracranial mouse model, suggesting that the use of ketogenic diet plus Avastin is going to make it the Avastin work better. Uh, another example, uh, we showed that uh, there was an enhance in anti-tumor immune response uh, in animals on a therapeutic ketogenic diet. And in 2021, um, another group showed that the ketogenic diet and ketone bodies not only enhance the anti-tumor immune response, but they enhance the effects of PD-1 blockade through um, other therapies that are currently in use in, in humans. The ketogenic diet is also being recognized for its ability to enhance the efficacy of other therapeutics. And this is not in brain tumors. This is uh, work done by Lou Cantley's group. And what they showed was that um, you get insulin feedback that happens when PI3 kinase inhibitors are used. And that actually reactivates the PI3 kinase mTOR signaling axis, which compromises the effectiveness of PI3 kinase inhibitors. If you inhibit this using ketogenic diet uh, or pharmaceuticals, you can actually enhance the efficacy and reduce the toxicity of compounds that are in clinical trials that are PI3 kinase inhibitors. So again, you can increase the efficacy of some of these therapies simply by using a ketogenic diet, and that does not increase the um, toxicity of these therapies as additional pharmaceuticals could possibly do. So it's really being recognized now that there are multiple mechanisms of anti-glioma action in the ketogenic diet. And in this paper, they actually mention quite a few of them. It enhances chemotherapy, protects healthy cells, lowers inflammation, regulates the gene expression of a variety of proteins, including metalloproteases, histone deacetylases, AMP-activated protein kinase, pyruvate kinase, and P53. So how does a ketogenic diet in vivo or ketones in vitro have such a profound pleiotropic effect? And one of the things that it can do is it causes changes in the microbiome. Do you love learning about metabolic health? So do we. It's why we created the Metabolic Initiative, an online educational platform providing evidence-based education on metabolic health and therapies for healthcare professionals and the general public. By joining the Metabolic Initiative, you'll gain access to hundreds of expert lectures, interviews, panel discussions, and even private episodes of the Metabolic Link. CMEs are available. Go to metabolicinitiative.com to get started. And as always, thank you for listening to the Metabolic Link.